Um, and also living in South Korea and Australia, um, I had some interesting culinary experiences eating yamcha in Sydney's downtown Chinatown. So growing up there, I imagined what Hong Kong would be like, this transnational cosmopolitan place, an imagination based on these films and photographs, as well as you know, experiencing uh, diasporic space of Hong Kong in, for example, Australia. I was remembering a place I had never been to based on my multisensory experiences. So perhaps this is why I have been thinking about space represented in and remembered through photography, a photographic space, if you will. While my published article was based on my research on photographs of the Kowloon Walled City, I hope my talk today will encourage you to think about your memories of space, whether experienced or imagined, and how they become renewed, enhanced, manipulated, perhaps completely fabricated or even erased by photography. So here we go. Between 1987 and 1992, Canadian photographer Greg Girard and British publisher Ian Lambert took hundreds of photographs of Hong Kong's Kowloon Walled City, once the most densely populated neighborhood in the world. The Walled City was infamous as a symbol of unruliness, an ever-expanding megalopolis within a megalopolis encompassing every dark alley of noir Hong Kong. Drug dens, black market commerce, unlicensed medical practices, sweatshops, gang operations, and even murders. In 1987, an administrative decision to demolish the city was made, undergoing a multi-phase process to its completion in 1993. Tens of thousands of residents and workers in the walled city were relocated and laid off, some with enough compensation to restart their lives, but most without. With everybody gone and the structures raised, and the public's attention now on the 1997 return of the former British colony to the Republic of Pe to the People's Republic of China, the city passed into the arena of reminiscence. I'm sorry, there's the third image. Um, the 20th, century, 20th anniversary of the city's destruction brought with, its, a, brought with it a desire to revisit these dark alleys of a bygone era. Yet that impulse seems rooted in something much deeper than the formality of the anniversary. By examining works on the walled city by Girard and Lambert, I explored this renewed and for some ongoing interest in reliving and revisiting Kowloon Walled City as made possible by the retelling of its stories and reviewing of its images in relation to Hong Kong's post-colonial post -colonial identity in the making. In 1993, Girard and Lambert published a photo photography book, City of Darkness, about uh, the then newly demolished The Walled City, which was reprinted in 1999. Um, the 1993 version is in our library collection. In 2014, they excavated their original photographs, interviews, and records, and in collaboration with historians, former city officials, writers, and former residents and city workers published extensive studies of Kowloon Walled City titled City of Darkness, Revisited. The Cantonese name for the city, Haknam, translates, the city of dark, translates to City of Darkness. The Walled City, although completely erased from its physical location, has been reborn through the book and other cultural productions, becoming a symbol of the colonial Hong Kong that harbored its organic rhizomatic growth. A prime example of Hong Kong's quote unquote guerrilla capitalism, est establishing the form of flexible manufacturing vital to the livelihood of most of the city's residents. By virtue of this new context, however, the walled city is now not merely a symbol of an era that cannot return, but a contested side of remembrance, remembrance in which Hong Kong's post-colonial identity is reimagined and reconstructed. The origins of the walled city go back more than a millennium. 
Kowloon was an important salt field during the Song Dynasty, and a small fort was built to house imperial soldiers, who controlled the salt trade. By 1668, a watch post was established on the site with a small garrison of 30 guards, and in 1847, six years after the British occupation of Hong Kong, this fort was improved with a stone wall from which the city's name comes. The walled city's most recent notoriety traces back to the 1890s when the area became infamous for its gambling dens. As the world outside the walled city was undergoing rapid transformation in the 20th century, the city itself began to, began to grow, a living creature adding layer upon layer to itself. According to James Saywell, a walled city, the walled city had almost surpassed its maximum capacity by the 1970s, with buildings stacked up on top of one another up to 14 stories high and blocking the daylight from interiors. Demographically, more than 70% of the residents were Chiu Chao, a people who, though part of the Canton region, spoke a dialect different from the Cantonese and had a distant, distinct culture. By the early 20th century, the area became the hub for the influx of Chiu Chao refugees from the mainland. The walled city was thus both physically and psychologically isolated from mainstream Hong Kong. This is what makes the revisiting of the city through post-colonial memories salient. While it stood, the city was viewed as other by those outside of it. In post-colonial memories, the city emerges as a symbol of a bygone Hong Kong, although colonial Hong Kong was never such an organically grown self-governing entity. Gerard and Nembut's photographs show their in encounters with some of the last residents of the walled city. Girard's photographs take us to the private quarters of residents he met in factories, food shops, and most often while walking through the maze-like completely covered alleyways that dominate the city. Many of these photographs were republished in City of Darkness Revisited and also exhibited in Hong Kong. Crucially, in, shifting, in sifting through more than 600 photographs originally considered for the 1993 publication, Girard and Lambert and the seven contributors to the photo book went in search of the city's retrospective identity, not as a lingering colonial ghost, but a site of Hong Kong's post-coloniality. Despite its physical structure having been completely erased from the face of the earth by 1993, according to Lambert, they wanted to explore how perceptions of the walled city have changed over time from being shunned by most Hong Kong residents during its lifetime to now being seen almost with pride as part of the territory's rich cultural heritage. The launch of the book was celebrated in September 2014 with an exhibition of Gerard and Lambert's photographs at a gallery so wonderfully named The Space on Hollywood Road in Hong Kong. Moreover, Lambert's newly printed archival quality aerial photograph of the city became part of the permanent collection at M+, Hong Kong's new multidisciplinary museum dedicated to visual culture and located in the West Kowloon Cultural District. With the publication of both the English and Chinese editions and exhibitions in Hong Kong, the revised photo book was clearly intended not only for English-speaking readers familiar with the history of the Wall City or Hong Kong's recent past, but also for Hong Kongers and transnational Chinese readers. It's Readership extended beyond a closed group of its inception, as its publication was financed through a successful Kickstarter campaign involving international and transnational supporters, many of them Hong Kongers and expatriates. Revisiting the walled city in 2014 through these photographs was necessitated by a heightened desire for a revisualization of Hong Kong and its post-colonial identity. Prior to that, however, the walled city was a widely used symbol of romantic dystopia. The Hollywood film director Christopher Nolan took the walled city as his inspiration for the sinister, lawless, and decaying enclave in his 2005 film, 
Batman Begins. There is even a sludge metal band named Kowloon Walled City, whose members are based in San Francisco, and have never been to the place or heard of its history before choosing the moniker. They just liked how it sounded, Kowloon Walled City. Currently, Kula and Viv, a video game developer, is working on a cat adventure game called Hong Kong Project, where the player is a cat exploring Kowloon Walled City. It's very hard to see, but it's being developed, and I think they ran, ran out of funding, so they halted it for a while, but hopefully it's going to come alive soon. The reimagining of Kowloon Walled City in 2014 holds particular resonance given the enormous pro-democracy demonstrations that took place in Hong Kong in September and October of the same year. The immediate cause of the democ democracy movement dubbed the Umbrella Revolution, or Umbrella Movement, referring to the protesters' use of umbrellas to shield themselves from pepper spray and other chemical attacks was an electoral reform deter deterring the democratic process. Many of the protesters, however, also believe that the current system in which only 232,000 people out of 3.5 million eligible voters and corporations are uh, functional constituencies, special interest groups involved in the electoral process allows continued growth of economic inequality. Although universal suffrage has been one of the main objectives of the movement, the underlying cause and concerns of the protests surround the in unequal distribution of wealth in the city, especially for participating college students, sustaining their lifestyles and livelihoods has been increasingly difficult. As Tai Wei Lim notes, quote, bread and butter issues are conf conflated with democratic agitations and expressed interchangeably in protest materials, rituals, and performances, end quote. As Kowloon Walled City provided homes for tens of thousands of its residents who were not able to afford housing outside of it, their relentless creation of makeshift space was key to the life of the place. 20 years after its demolition, for a brief period of two months or so, self-organized living, dealing with water and waste, creating Zones of public and private space once again became crucial to the life of life in Hong Kong. During the umbrella movement, the occupation of Hong Kong's urban infrastructure, quote, literally transformed the city into their own vision of community living, embodying critique of the established urban rules of the city and a de facto demand for an urban equality of space, end quote. What the walled city represents now a self-sustainable city that grew organically as Hong Kong's heterotopia, overlaps cons considerably with the space of the umbrella movement. The pro-democracy movement and the commemoration of the 20th anniversary of the demolition of Kowloon Wall City politically and aesthetically articulate a desire and nostalgia for a Hong Kong that was burgeoning with economic and cultural prosperity and for the independence and space that allowed a place like the walled city to thrive in its own way. Indeed, nostalgia for a bygone era is powerfully associated with colonial architectural structures as seen in, for example, the civic unrest and prolonged demonstrations against the special administrative region government, SAR government, uh, decision to demolish colonial landmarks such as the Star Ferry Pier in 2006. Such sites of nostalgia, in turn, come to yield what Helen Grace calls spectral monumentality, a bringing into existence of invisible monuments, in this case, the memories of demolished structures which survive in an embodied form, through imagery, particularly digital photography, and the online sharing of it. In the case of Gerard and Lambert's images, they survived in an embodied form of film photography as well as circulations of digital photography today. Nevertheless, the invisible city remains spectrally and spectacularly monumental in the form of photographs hanging on gallery walls and as beautifully reproduced photo books or in projections like this. 
The publication of City of Darkness Revisited not only memorialized historic and historicized the city in the context of post-colonial Hong Kong, but also gave voice to the long-silenced, colonized Chinese underclass in Hong Kong. Its biggest contribution is not merely the fact that the book revisualized the walled city as it stood and was demolished at the brink of Hong Kong's transition to a post-colony but it signified the desire not to forget and to re-identify the walled city today. The desire cannot be simplified as turn of the century sentiment or mourning. It is also about the desire to hold on to the walled cities and Hong Kong's imagined past, constructed and reconstructed through its body that has been gone for two decades. Well, today, two and a half decades. This desire is fundamentally to the making of Hong Kong's post-coloniality. In other words, memory making is also a process of shaping post-colonial conditions, just as the umbrella movement has hoped to shape them. Today, Kowloon Walled City is remembered as an ideal urban form, Rather than being remembered only as dark, dripping, and smelly, it is discussed as, quote, highly socially integrated and hyper-efficient with space, accommodating all functions from living to working to recreation to social services within a dense, walkable, uh, I almost said space, but it says, in quote, area. This sounds rather like a description of an ideal real estate property, and even more tantalizing given the current market, Hong Kong real estate market, um, which is uncontrollable, an affordable location. Remembering the walled city as self-reliant, socially integrated, and hyper-efficient becomes more poignant consider considering the massive difficulties so far the umbrella movement has faced to achieve electoral reform, with the SAR government retaliating through strengthened control of the media and educational institutions. The photographs of Kowloon walled city may help construct a different kind of memory in 20 years from now. And that may be because Hong Kong will have become a different place than it is now. Or maybe not. But it is this desire for a reimagined, reconstructed post-colonial identity that will keep Kowloon Wall City as a placeholder of memories of Hong Kong. Thank you. <laughs>